today let's do a handstand follow along using the handstand blocks. Now it doesn't matter whether you've got round ones or rectangular ones. I'm gonna cover basic positioning. So the standard two arm positions, straight, straddle and tuck. And then we'll go into the more advanced work if you're working towards things like one arm handstands. Now whichever variation you're using, just make sure that you're holding it like you're gonna throw it. So you wanna feel like you've got a really good grip on the block. It should feel nice and comfortable. So you can go on that one. This one's exactly the same. Now I prefer two fingers or three fingers around the front. I'm not a big fan of one finger. And if you're new to using the handstand blocks, basically just hold them like this and pretend they're your hands and then just do your kick up. So whether that's uh, away from the wall, kicking up to a standard straight position. If you have a strong handstand hold, obviously do it that way. If not, jump up against the wall. Exactly the same thing, but kissing the wall lightly. You could then do your normal balance drills. You could do your heel pulls, toe pulls, and just build some balance and some condition in there. And that can work as a great warm up. So basically just kick up five times in a row to your straight handstand, hold for a few seconds, come back down. Same thing again, two, and let's do five, three. So we're just looking for consistency, catching that handstand every time, showing control five times in a row is a good test. Then we have the three main shapes where we wanna build some time in the position. So if we went for 30 second hold in a straight handstand first, now if you're not up to that level, obviously you could accumulate the time or you could use the wall just to build that, that time first. So heels very lightly on the wall, pull off a little bit and then just build that 30 seconds conditioning in the straight position. But ideally, and especially if you're working towards one arms, 30 seconds on the blocks in a straight position should be quite comfortable to do. It should feel quite relaxed. If you feel really strong in the position, you could even start to let go of the fingers a little bit. So I'm not gripping with the fingers now. And that's really testing that sweet spot, that balance window. And then I'll be doing exactly the same in a straddle position. So I prefer to start off in a straight handstand, lock the knees, open to your straddle, and then hold there. So ideally the straddle position should feel very locked in so it's not loose in the legs, the knees aren't bending at all, the hip isn't open and closing. It just feels like one strong segment. And if you need to, nice and close to the wall, start with the heels on the wall, open to your straddle, but lightly touches the wall, that's too far away. Just move a little bit closer. So you wanna feel that the butt lightly touches and it's just there for a spot. Notice the toes are away from the wall, so just holding that position again, accumulate, or ideally hit 30 seconds in one go. And then exactly the same in the tuck, start in the straight position. If you're using the wall, heels lightly touching, close the hips and the knees, but very, very lightly touching for that 30 second hold, try and lock that position in. If you're doing it freestanding, again, start in the straight position, close the knees and the hips at the same time, try and keep the shoulders on top of the hands, and then lock that position. Now for some of you who are newer to this, just go as far as you can with these drills and then just play around with that, but make sure that you're doing the basics of the straight position, the straddle and the tuck as a priority. But let's just have a play with the first one. So I'm just gonna kick or jump to a straddle handstand. So I'm gonna pass through straight first. So lock the straddle in, and then all I'm gonna do is, is keeping the elbows pushed in towards the midline, I'm gonna dip one side and then the other side. So I'm just gonna play around with that flagging type movement not making it too big so it knocks me out of position, but just trying to fly the legs like airplane wings. And then come back with control. And then instead of going down the standard one arm handstand route in terms of going up onto fingertips and spending time there, today I'm gonna to play with it slightly different and use the block walking drill to take us through those one arm handstand progressions. This is a fun way just to mix it up. And the push, the strength, the rebalance that you get from the climbing drills is actually really good for your one arm handstand window of balance and makes your catch much bigger. So let's just move one block out of the way now. So I'm gonna place one hand on the floor. I'm gonna place the other hand on the block. I'm just gonna kick or jump to a straight handstand, open to straddle. I'm gonna look at the left hand. I'm gonna shift across towards the left hand with a little bit of flag. And then if I can make that right hand a little bit light, I'm just gonna move it out of the way and go back to two hands. Back to straight and come back down. I'm then gonna repeat exactly the same thing on the right hand side. So kick or jump to handstand, open to straddle, load the right hand with a little bit of flag, looking at that hand, make that left hand a little bit light, move it out the way, come back again. 
Now that might take a little while to get that one. You might need to use the wall. You might need to have someone spot you with the hips, with the legs. Just be careful with it. These blocks don't slide well on the rubber floors. It's a bit easier if they can slide because you don't have to pick the block up so much. But have a play around with different surfaces and different blocks. Now we can progress that and now start on two blocks. So place them down on the floor, jump or kick to handstand, open to straddle, be nice and strong there. Tilt over to one side, decrease the weight in that left hand, move the block out the way, come back down. Same thing now as we've done before. So I can load that left side, move the block out the way, and I'm back to two arms on the floor. Now you're gonna to start to find, and you probably know already, that one side is much more comfortable than the other to load. So this is gonna be easier starting with the right or with the left hand side. So then we just repeat the process, but now on the opposite side. So starting straddle, look at the left hand, shift weight over, make sure the right hand becomes light and I feel strong that I'm not gonna fall out to the side. Find a position that you're comfortable in, find the balance, flag over, same thing. Hold, pause before you go, move the block. Find the balance, bring the legs together, show control, come back down. Now those little pauses are really important. So when I go over to one side, I need to make sure I'm there before I do this and come back down again. What I don't wanna be doing is moving and shifting in this direction, then do this. Because you'll end up just like moving crazily in lots of different directions and you never create a strong balance foundation. So see if you can pause between the steps show control before moving to the next one. Now we can go into the fun bit, so climbing back up again. Now this is very, very challenging. So with your setup with this one, make sure that you put the blocks just outside your little fingers when your hands are in a handstand position. So if I handstand like this, that's where I want the blocks. I don't wanna have the blocks over there. I also don't wanna have them like this and then be bunched up in the middle there. So I wanna make sure that I'm in a nice, comfortable two-arm handstand. And then I would just stay on your knees or your toes and just run through the steps. So I'm gonna look at the right hand first. I'm gonna push the elbow in towards the mid midline as I transfer weight over to that right hand. From there, I'm gonna go up onto fingertips. And if I have enough weight out of this hand, I can move it onto the block. I then bring the block back where the hand was and then repeat the process. Now this one's gonna be a bit more of a push up because now I have this hand is elevated. So I look across, shift weight and go up onto fingertips, then reach for this block pull it in towards the middle where the hands are and return to center. So kick or jump to two arms, show control, open to straddle, look across to the left hand, shift weight across, go to fingertips, reach, hold the block, bring it into where the hand was. Now the big push up onto fingertips, show control, bring it over so there's weight out of that left hand, grab hold of the block, bring it to your hand position and then legs in, show control, and come back down. And then if that feels okay, attempt it on the other side. Now this one's probably gonna look a little bit messy. You can see mine is moving around a little bit too much. I need to practice this or warm up quite a few times with this to make it smoother. And you'll probably find you're gonna get quite frustrated with these. It's not unusual to throw these around the garden. So if you fail a few times in a row, I just back it off to a slightly easier variation and then return to it on another day. So I find the blocks are a nice way to mix up your training. It's a bit more fun and something else to focus on. And it's definitely refreshing and nice to mix it up after the thousands of repetitions of just fingertip holds with the one arm work. Check out my website if you're interested in coaching, www.paultwyman.com.au. Details down in the description for my app, and let me know how you go.